Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the BSA R10 SE on test, but before that I make targeting rabbits with the Night Sight Wolf and its brilliant new R Tech guys. I make targeting rabbits this evening. Now, although there are quite a few on this ground, they are pretty wary because they've been subjected to a lot of shooting pressure over the last few months. So what I'm planning to do is wait until it gets dark and then target them under the cover of darkness using night vision gear. And hopefully that'll help us to put a few in the bag. We get asked a lot of questions about the equipment that we use on the show. So tonight I'm just gonna kick off by talking about the NV setup. Now, it's the Night Sight Wolf in Artec, guys. It works brilliantly, has some really great features, and most importantly of all, is really easy to use. Starting at the front, we've got the screen module, which also features the integral illuminator at the front. Now, the Wolf has a detection range of up to 300 meters, and although that sounds like quite a long distance for air gun use, it's really handy for spotting quarry at range and then stalking in for the shot. And if you do find the illumination a little bit too bright for close range work like ratting, you can quickly and easily wind it down using the dial on top of the module. Behind the screen, we've got the rechargeable battery and the rubber adapter which connects the camera to the back of the scope. And it's this camera which actually sees through the scope to create the sight picture. Now there have been some really brilliant developments with the iTech unit. Firstly, it's now got an external focusing dial so you can very quickly tweak the focus of the reticle to get it nice and sharp on the screen. On top of that it's now got one touch recording so if you press this red button whatever's appearing on the screen is recorded to the micro SD card within the camera module here and you can then pop that out when you get home and upload any footage straight to your computer or tablet. And if all that isn't enough you can even connect the Night Sight Artec to your smartphone via Wi-Fi. All you need to do is download the free Night Player app, switch on the Night Sight, and then whatever appears on the screen can also be viewed on your device. With a range of about 10 meters, it's a brilliant way to share the action with a shooting buddy who's set up nearby. And if all that technology sounds complicated to you, don't worry, it really isn't. The night sight is very easy to use. In the field, all you really need to use to operate it is the on off switch on the back of the camera module. And remember, because it's mounted to the back of your day scope, there's no need to re zero. All of your aim points are in exactly the same place as they would usually be. Right, so that's the night vision setup. Typically, we've picked another very still evening, which you seem to have a habit of doing when we're out night shooting. Not ideal because the rabbits are likely to hear our footsteps coming from a long way off. Fortunately, the Ultimate Sport is fitted with the QTEC silencer, so at least that'll be nice and quiet. What I'm going to do now is have a go at a few paper targets to make sure I'm on form, and then we'll come back when it's properly dark and hopefully there'll be a few rabbits about. Right, well the sun's gone down now, so hopefully there will be a few rabbits out and about and on the move. We have got quite a clear sky and a fairly large moon, so there's quite a lot of ambient light, so I am concerned that those rabbits will see us moving around. One thing though, the breeze has picked up a little bit, so they don't stand quite such a chance of hearing us as I thought they would earlier. So we'll give it a crack. 
Although conditions aren't perfect, I'm confident that one or two rabbits should have ventured out to feed now that the sun has gone down. So we should be in for a few shots. One thing that is worth pointing out about tonight's show is that you'll notice what looks like a lot of light coming from the night sight. That's because we're using a night vision camera that picks up the beam from the infrared illuminator. It's completely invisible to the naked eye. This looks promising. There are several rabbits out feeding in this field. They seem fairly oblivious, so we should be in for some action. Okay, looks like we have got a few rabbits out. I'm just going to need to stalk in a little bit closer to get within range for the shot. The vital thing here is for me to get myself into position without making too much noise. The wind has dropped again, so any sound is really going to carry. Through the night sight, it's clear to see that a couple of rabbits have lingered, and the shot is on. That's got us off the mic. There was another rabbit there which did linger for a while and I thought I was going to make it a brace. But it's ran back in. Let's go and get that first one. Any rabbits bagged tonight are destined for the pot. So I'm giving this one a squeeze along its belly to empty the bladder, which will help to prevent the meat from becoming tainted. I'll carry out the paunching duties later on, when I'll hopefully have a few more to deal with. And so it's back on with the hunt. Tonight's clear sky and full moon won't do us any favours. Ideally you want a really dark night with plenty of cloud cover but we'll stick with it and see what we can find. Back on with the night sight, and it's apparent that we aren't the only ones out on the prowl for rabbits tonight. Now that's not what I wanted to see. We've got what looks like quite a young fox out hunting, and that is bound to put the rabbits on edge any that hang around anyway. One thing it does show though is just how crisp the night sight image is because that's quite a way away and considering I'm using a fixed parallax scope that's parallaxed at about 35 meters that's still a really good clear image. I could see the whole thing not just the eye shine. If I was using something a bit more powerful it'd be bad news for that fox. With that fox no doubt putting the rabbits to ground in this field, I've got no option but to move on and try somewhere else. The trick with this sort of shooting is to stay on the move, stopping and scanning every so often to see what's up ahead. My persistence is rewarded, and I eventually see something a little more encouraging on the screen of the night sight. Right, looks like we might have another chance here. I'm just going to try and get in a little bit closer to make sure. It's not until you get out in conditions like this, on a still night with almost no ambient sound, that you realise just how much noise your hunting gear actually makes when you're on the move.
The rabbit has held position, giving me the opportunity of another shot on a challenging night. There's another one to the night sight. I really can't overemphasize just how difficult it is tonight. We've had two rabbits so far, and although that's a fairly meagre bag, I don't think we'd have had anything if we'd been waving a lamp around. As with the first rabbit, I'm draining this one's bladder before it goes into the bag. It really is hard work this evening, but I'm not going to quit just yet. So I carry on across the fields in an effort to pick off one or two more unsuspecting bunnies with the night vision setup. I've not seen anything for a while now and to be honest I'm not too surprised because we haven't picked a very good evening. The sky has gone off really clear now and it is feeling very like we're literally casting shadows on the ground. On top of that with all of my chat we're making a lot of noise probably alerting rabbits to our presence long before we get close to them so in the interest of trying to bag one or two more and doing a bit of decent pest control I'm going to send Nikki packing now and have a bit longer out here on my own. Not an easy night there, but a few rabbits still brought to book thanks to the night sight. And now, it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. The Olympics are underway and Britain's sole air gun shooting competitor Jen McIntosh had to overcome a rifle malfunction in her opening event. In the qualifying stages of the woman's air rifle, a screw holding the sight interfered with the opening of the bolt on Jen's rifle, resulting in her coach having to run to the service bay to get it fixed while the shot clock was still ticking. Jen recovered well and finished 15th, a promising start in her weaker event. Back at home, the eagerly anticipated final of British Shooting's National Target Sprint Series was a huge success. Competitors gathered at Sport Wales National Centre in Cardiff in a bid to clinch the champion title. Alistair Pierce won the male category with a time of 5 minutes 2 seconds, while Olivia Manson was crowned the fastest female with a time of 5 minutes 42 seconds. Both winners took home MPR Sporter air rifles donated by Air Arms. New to the airgun scene are two guns from the shooting party. First, there's the Tai Chi air pistol, and then there's the Russian-inspired Mosin Nagant replica rifle. We paid the shooting party a visit at the Ragley Game Fair to find out more. Tai Chi, meaning uh, the relaxing art, isn't it? And as you say, a martial art. The Tai Chi pistol, uh, very modern materials, uh, superb anodizing, available in a range of colors. Uh, it's the rotating breech pistol with an external hammer for extra safety. See polymer grips, it's got a scope rail, you can also put an open sight option as well. But you can put on red dot sights, lasers or scopes. It's got a built-in silencer, it's vented along the sides here as well to, uh, for extra accuracy. It takes one CO2 capsule that fits in underneath. These are £239. Say that's for a brand new pistol with 12 month warranty. 
exclusively available from the shooting party at our suppliers. Our Moss in the Gant CO2 powered steel BB firing rifle is a uh, authentic looking replica of the Russian Moss in the Gant rifle. Uh, very famous for its use in World War II and to anyone who's seen films such as Enemy at the Gates. Adjustable sights, bolt works the action, bolt can be field stripped and it comes with a detachable magazine. It has a magazine there containing 16 steel BBs, it comes complete with a sling and a feature which is uh, a little bit unusual is a bayonet so you can actually uh, fix this bayonet. I must point out the bayonet is blunt. The uh, Moss in the Gant is coming in at a price of £349. Uh, there are options available to fit a telescopic sight to it as well. And finally, this year's Midland Game Fair takes place at Western Park in Shropshire on the 17th and 18th of September. And you can save on your ticket price by booking now. The show hosts the keenly contested European Field Target Championships and is also home to the Air Gun Expo, where visitors will be able to shoot the latest air guns under the supervision of ATEO instructors. Exhibitors include Air Arms, Day State, BSA Guns, Brocock, Gamo, The Shooting Party, Sanwell Field Sports and MTC Optics. That was the Air Gun Show News. This week's review is the BSA R10 SE, their pre-charged multi-shot hunting weapon. With a recommended retail of 799, let's go over some of the features that you're getting for your money. BSA's cold hammer forged barrel, in this case shrouded and silenced, you can also remove the shroud and just go to the standard diameter barrel if you want in a slightly more sleek look. Um, for me, I'm quite happy with the shroud and also the fact that it's got a nice matte black finish that extends over and onto the silencer as well. With the standard length barrel and silencer attached, giving an overall length of just over the meter. The camo finish on this gun's got a nice tactile feel to it. A semi-vertical pistol grip which puts the hand into the right position for the trigger and also a thumb shelf if that's your chosen shooting position with the thumb directly behind the trigger. The stock's also ambidextrous, same profile, cheek piece, you can be shot right-handed, left-handed, so in some hunting situations when you're around the farm, if you're peeping around a, a corner and you're getting a decent rest, sometimes it's more advantageous to shoot off your left shoulder. The butt pad's also multi-adjustable, there's a small Allen bolt in the middle of the stock which when loosened you can raise and lower the butt pad, you can also twist the butt pad round on its axis which would change the position of how the gun contacts in the shoulder. The gun comes out of the box straight away with sling swivels as well so mounting your chosen sling or bipod and sling and any variation thereof um, straight out of the box so pretty much a standard feature but nicely positioned as well. The 10 shot magazines on the BSA R10 really really easy to load. There's a small post inside the magazine that as you put a pellet in, it holds against. So, from first pellet in, rotate it round, put another pellet in. Each pellet that you put in past the first holds the spring tension against a small post in the magazine, which as you then load the pellet into the gun and then pull the bolt back out, looking for a second pellet, the magazine clicks round. Really simple, not an awful lot that can go wrong. And when the magazine's full, 10 will be showing on the top of the mag. Once you put the magazine into the gun, there's a small clip to the front, just to the left-hand side of the barrel, which is a retention stud that keeps the magazine in the gun. You can then also cycle the bolt through to lock the magazine into the gun as well. As standard, the gun comes with two magazines, which is really handy. You can have one in the gun, keeping a tally of where the pellet count is, all of the magazines are numbered so you can see exactly where you are. When you get to the last pellet in the gun as well, also a small white indicator pops into a small window in the magazine that you can see sticking out of the left-hand side of the gun. The bolt on the BSA R10, matte black finish. Same finish as the shroud on the barrel and the silencer. Nice finish on a hunting gun. 
slick, very, very slick bolt. Operating, very, very simple, and it, it's just effortless in use. So it's, it's really nice when you have a, a pre-charge that is multi-shot that actually cycles nicely and smoothly. Across the top of the action, there's nearly seven and a quarter inches of 10.8 mil, so 11 mil dovetail. Um, no magazine coming up and through above the height of the rail and the rail's also fairly level with the barrel as well so mounts really quite easy you can pretty much mount anything that you want that takes an 11 mil dovetail safety catch on the r10 is mounted to the rear of the action on the left hand side so in a standard shooting position it's very accessible for the thumb of your shooting hand the r10's trigger it's a two-stage trigger Nice easy first stage, and then a crisp second stage. It's adjustable for length, forward and back, and the trigger blade can also be rotated round, left and right to suit different shooters. You can see the charging indicator underneath. We're quite low, so let's give the gun a little charge. Get your dive cylinder in a sensible position. Get the gun supported so it isn't going to move. The probe on the BSA double o-ringed with a port engages into the port underneath the gun just up front of the pressure gauge simple task carefully insert the probe into the gun making sure you've got it bottomed all the way and then I watch both gauges the gauge on the pump or the cylinder but also the gauge on the gun carefully open you're not blasting the gun full, a steady fill. Leave the air out of the hose, remove the probe, job done. Scoped up, mags loaded, charged with air, covered the basic features, it's time to punch some holes in some paper. Accuracy from the R10 has been fantastic. We've had quite a blustery day, so you know some of the groups have been pushing an odd pellet out. Um, you know, it's, it's printing around about the half inch mark for 10 shots at 30 yards. So more than capable for hunting, and you know, I'm very pleased with the accuracy from the gun there. You can't help but put a smile on your face. Consistency-wise as well across the chronograph, really sort of tight results there. Um, standard deviation around two feet per second. Um, it's giving 560 odd feet per second with their arms field pellet which is about 16 grains which is roughly sort of translates to 11.1 foot pounds 11.2 round about there um, really really consistent so certainly the the regulator inside the BSA R10 is doing a superb job after a good number of shots through the R10 you really start to appreciate what BSA have done with the R10 charging's very very easy loading the mags is incredibly easy there's nothing on this gun really that I don't like. Um, I found it an awful lot of fun to use. I found it very effective at what it's been made to do. Um, and I for one can't wait to get it into the field if I get a chance. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.